project that we have with the Bureau of Reclamation as well as um, uh, uh, NASA, all of these are really intimately tied and trying to improve our understanding of the mountain snowpacks. The project is uh, an aircraft carrying an imaging spectrometer and a scanning LIDAR to get at the two most important properties of the mountain snowpack, snow albedo, the reflectivity of the surface, and, and then the uh, snow water equivalent, uh, and that comes from the LIDAR. But with the Airborne Snow Observatory, we're trying to first answer, what is the spatial distribution of snow water equivalent? And in mountain basins, this has never been done in a spatially complete fashion. And, and we're doing that now. We're covering entire basins. So we can fly immediately before a storm and immediately afterwards. And the difference between those two gives us the snowfall distribution. Uh, ultimately, water managers are going to have a more complete picture of the actual volumes of mountain snowpack how that is changing from week to week. And it's just, it's mind-blowing for the, for so many in the community who are, are looking at these data now to realize how different the actual spatial distribution of snow water equivalent is from what we have modeled far more heterogeneous than, than we have thought. Then on the spectrometer side, we want to know how the the albedo, the reflectivity, is varying uh, across the landscape. And then combining those two, how those changes in snow albedo, reflectivity, uh, translate into changes in snow melt rates. So that's, that's one of the processes that can control the absorption of sunlight and the acceleration of snow melt. Another one that we're looking at right now that is uh, the deposition of dust from lowland deserts, from transport from Asia, and black carbon, industrial soot, uh, the deposits on the snow. And in the Colorado River Basin, this is turning out to be a really big impact. The, the transformation of the landscape out in the deserts over the last 150 years caused us to have dust storms that blow out and up into the Colorado River Basin, into those high mountains. And what we're finding now with our, our modeling and our measurements of the high mountain sites is that this acceleration of, of snow melt by dust causes the snowpack to, to be removed one to nearly two months earlier than it would in the absence of that dust. And so the combination of these, having the full spatial distribution of snow water equivalent, the full spatial distribution of reflectivity, and then being able to use that information to better tease out what is actually going on with the physics. How does that vary from basin to basin? How does it vary from region to region? So maritime snowpack, Sierra to, to the Intermountain West, and we need these basic physics combined with uh, complete measurements to be able to answer these, these questions which are absolutely critical to sustaining civilization out in a, in a warming world out here in the West which is inherently dry but relies on snow melt from, from remote mountains.